What's good, guys? It's Kuntash from Internet Money, and I'm going to show you guys how to arrange beats today. It's one of the most simplest things when it comes to producing, but like most people, they overthink it, and um, they kind of just drop the ball with it sometimes because they don't know how long you know, a verse should be or how long a hook should be. And I have this uh, loop I made here last night. It's all fleshed out. I think these are all the sounds I'm going to use, so I'm going to let you guys hear this really quick before I you know, arrange it. Okay. Um, basically, once you have all your sounds and stuff like that together on like one channel, Essentially, you're going to split them up, obviously. Go to pattern, click split by channel, and then now, like, everything has its own, you know, pattern. And um, most people would go, I guess, uh, they would go along as they uh, post everything out. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a time lapse of me arranging the beat. And I'm going to explain to you guys everything else after. So I can tell you how long is four bars, how long is eight bars, et cetera. So I'm going to do that now. Give me one second. So I've got the entire thing mapped out front to back now. Okay, so essentially, um, how I kind of do my beats, I do I do an intro and then the hook and then the verse, hook, verse, hook, and then an outro of some sort. You can always come in on the verse if you want to, just depending on what type of beat I do, that really determines if it's going to um, come in on the hook or not. Now... Um, when it comes to counting out, I guess, how many bars, so to speak, when you are making beats that are above, I would say like maybe one, well, really, I guess a hundred, a hundred BPM. Yeah. Like anything over a hundred BPM, I would consider that to be double time. So from here to here, that's four bars technically. And that's one loop, so to speak. Even though you may play a pattern and it's only four measures, or yeah, four measures, it's um technically half a loop because this beat is in double time. Now, if this beat was half time of this, which is like 60 something, um, one of these, like this, would be the four bars. But in this case, is this would be four bars because it's two loops and it's double time. And when it comes to arranging, um, knowing how long your bars are, so to speak, is very crucial, but it's a very easy concept to grasp. And 
another thing that's very important with arranging is that your sound placement, what sounds come in at certain times and stuff like that. Um, with this beat, I use both an 808 and a synth bass so I can do different variations throughout the verses and throughout the hook. Like on the intro right here, I'll play it for you. drops into an 808 so people will know like hey that's the hook the 808 is on the hook you can do different things to variate between your verses and your hooks like that and um sometimes i would even go as far as to put in like a build up of some sort some people use risers i use like a close i use like a reverse uh open hat and then it goes into like the actual open hat kind of like a reverse symbol crash type deal like this so that's one distinct thing I do when I arrange. And then um, during the verses with this one, I think during your verses, like you can be very, very minimal with what sounds you use at what time, especially with your drums and whatnot. You don't have to put like the whole perk section that you used in there because it's just the verse. The hook is really where the meat of your beat is going to be in terms of your sounds. Like I'll play this verse and then I'll play the hook back again and you'll hear like the difference. to do at the end of my verses so to speak i like to break the beat down to like the bare minimum with maybe like just the synth and maybe like uh whatever bass i was using and then i'll build it back up back into the hook and um a lot of things i've been noticing now with mainstream music is that nobody's really writing 16 bar verses anymore a lot of people are doing like 12 bar verses so that's how i'm personally sequencing for the most part right now like this uh, verse right here is 12 bars, we, you know, four or eight and then 12 bars right there. And then the hook's eight bars, always going to be eight bars unless um, they're doing some, you know, something crazy with like a breakdown afterward, make like a 12 bar hook or something like that. And then uh, I know another thing people have a lot of trouble with is when it comes to arranging is just like, oh, how do I make the second verse? sound different from the first verse, even though I use the same sounds and stuff like that. It just all comes with sequencing and where you put certain things at. Um, typically though, when I transition to my second verse, when I arrange, it's very similar to the first verse, but how the beat comes back together is usually different. I might drop certain things early, kind of like down here, how I have this uh, hat, this hi-hat pattern. Um, I wait until about two, four, six, eight bars in to, you know, drop it. But right now I bring it in immediately when, you know, I'm on my fifth bar down here. And then I break it down again, but then I build it back up with more drums and then the hook comes back in. So that's one way to do it. And then um, I usually do outros as well. I usually put like growth speed or something like that at the end of it because it's just like, I don't know, it makes it feel more like a song because without this outro, this beat would be three minutes and 19 seconds. That's fairly average time, but I wanted to hit that 3.30 or something like that without having to make like the verses longer because then the beat would be too long at that point. So like a little, little four bar outro at the end. I just threw like slow trip it on, I think, or something like that. <laughs> And 
I usually just fade them out or I just let it play out at the end or whatever you want. But that's all there is to it really is just, you know, placing your sounds in um, sequential order, bringing things in, taking things out at certain parts. But typically on the hook, though, you definitely want to have like all your sounds going at once. Maybe that's usually how I do it. Sometimes though, I'll throw in like an odd sound on like the second verse um, just to make it a bit more musical. But if you just want a typical feel, that's typically what I do for it. But um, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, comment. You know, if you have any more questions, if you want me to do a follow up tutorial about this for more complex stuff when it comes to sequencing and arranging, I can definitely do that. Thanks for watching.